When big fish are the target on commercials, there's only one bait for me. This tactic actually helped me catch my biggest ever match weight, 420 pounds. We're at Monk Lakes, and this is the place I honed my pace fishing skills. Over today's session, I'm gonna be teaching you a few tips and tricks to get the most out of your pace fishing. Paste is quite an acquired tactic, but if you haven't got it in your armory, you're missing out. The first thing I like to do when I get to my peg to fish paste is mix the paste itself. And it's really important because that's going to set up your day and help you catch lots of fish. A lot of people think mixing paste is really complicated. It's actually really easy and been made even easier by Mainline Match and their pure pellet paste. And the best way to go about it is simply unscrew the little tub it comes in, pour it into a bait box. And as you can see, it's a super fine mix, loads of oil in there, which is really important because it just means the paste is going to stay on the hook a little bit longer and break down slower. So all I'll do then is get some water. And the, the handy thing about the tub is it comes with three markers. So the top marker is for a soft paste. So if you want to fish a really sloppy paste, maybe in the edge, it's perfect for that. And the medium level paste is good for a lot of your pole fishing, long and short. And the bottom one, the bottom level marker, is uh, for a stiff paste. So any rod and line fishing with a waggler or a method feeder or a lead, it's perfect for that. So today, I'm just going to go up the middle line marker, pour a little bit more water out, try and be as accurate as you possibly can with this. I'm just going to pour it straight into the paste. It's really important at this point, just to get in every corner of the box, because it is very fine. You do have to mix it really thoroughly. And as you can see with this, those lumps are sort of disappearing. I'm just getting into every corner of the box. And you'd look at it now and you think, there's no way I can fish out on the hook, it's, it's ruined. But like I say, if you wait a little bit longer and wait sort of an hour, and uh, in true fashion, I've got my hands. I actually got one, I did, as soon as we got to the swim this morning, I've got this one here, which you can see is completely different, much stiffer texture, sort of perfect for getting on the hook. I've not even touched it yet, but it's a lovely sloppy texture. One other thing you can do with it, which is well worth doing, especially now it's summertime and the waters are very coloured a lot of places, is get some red dye in it. Red dye works particularly well in coloured water. So if I just wet my hand again, this is the mainline Captive 8 dye. And it's, uh, it's really potent, so you don't need loads of it. And this is sort of the messiest part. I'm going to get your hand in there and just mix it all up really thoroughly. Get right in there. And it doesn't take long to see that you've got two completely different colours of paste. You can really smell that red krill as well. And that's a, just a second really good hook bait option. Might just get you an extra couple of bites. And a really, really good thing to do this time of year is, again, it's a really hot, sunny day. But the weather can be changeable in the UK. You know, you might have sunny days, you might have really windy days, or it could start raining. So it's a good idea to decant your paste into a, a smaller tub. I'm a massive fan of these, these 210 tubs. The best thing about them is they're quite a low surface area. A lot of your bait's not on show at one time. So if you put your paste in one of these, I'm just going to put a little bit in just to show. You know, it's a lot smaller than the bait tub surface area. So it just protects that a little bit better. It's got a tinted lid as well, which is really handy. So I've closed the lid like that. Your paste, is, your paste is really well protected. But a really good tip and something that's well worth doing is I like to just get the lid and only sort of bring the zip round to sort of the first corner, if you like. And the reason I bring it round to the first corner is if you had to open and close your paste a lot during the day, especially on a really hot, sunny day like today, and there's a bit of wind around as well, it doesn't take very long for your paste to dry out. So all it takes you for one time to forget to close the tub and your paste is sort of ruined and you have to start again. It's all worth going around to that first corner, like I say, and you can easily slide your hand in and out of the tub and it keeps your paste in really good condition for the whole match. Plumbing up's always important, but especially with your pace fishing. Because there's a direct link between your float and your hook bait and you're fishing essentially dead depth, the last thing you want to do is find the wrong spot to fish and you can't see your float, or the other way and your float sink out of the water too much. So it's really important to just spend that extra little bit of time plumbing up. I'm going to fish a few different lines in my swim today. And what I mean by lines are different areas of the peg that I might want to target at different times during the day. Starting off, a really good place to start on a lot of commercial fisheries is on a short pole. So only maybe two or three sections of your pole out from the bank, you can usually nick a few early fish. It's quite an interesting lake here at Monks that the near slope only stops at around a top kit in one section out. And because I'm fishing for quite big carp today, that's probably quite close to be starting your swim. So I'm gonna aim for around the top five of my pole. So I'm just gonna get a plummet out of my box. Nice 
30 gram plummet. It's always a good idea to fish quite a good, good sized plummet. It gives you a good idea of what exactly the bottom's made out of. You know, you might be fishing on silt, you might be fishing on clay. A bigger plummet just gives you a bit of a better idea of what's going on. So if I ship out to a top five, you know, I can tell it's, it's not too bad there. Like it's quite a silty, well-established lake, this. And it's sort of just, it's a gradual sort of slope from my left to my right. It gets a little bit shallower as I go to my left. Not too much, just a real gradual slope and that's a really nice place to fish. So that tells me the silt's not settled there too bad and I can probably get quite a few good bites there. When pace fishing, marking your depth is one of the most important factors. You've got to be fishing dead depth on the bottom all the time, but that doesn't mean to say you shouldn't be flexible with where you have your float. So you might have to move it up and down in relation to that marker during your session. Marking the depth is really simple. All you've got to do is hook your hook on the bottom of your top kit and mark dead depth with a little bit of tip X and set your float right to that point. This is really important because this is a good reference point. So throughout your session, you'll always know exactly where the bottom of the lake is. My long pole swim, I try and find somewhere really comfortable, around 13 metres. This way I know that it's not too far out that I'm going to struggle to hold a pole in any wind and I can easily loose feed there as well. The key way to tell if you're fishing in seal or not is to lower your plummet or let it fall from quite a good height, maybe a foot or so, and you can see that, you can feel it through the pole usually and see, see with your elastic that the plummet's getting stuck in the bottom. So if I let my, my rig fall, and go to lift it back up, a little bit of elastic comes out where it's just stuck in the silt a little bit. That's not a problem. Pace fishing is really effective in silt. It's probably one of the best, best things about the bait itself. So it's not a problem at all that we're fishing in some silt. In fact, it's, we'll probably get a good giveaway with some bubbles and stuff. So that's not a problem. I'm really happy with how that plumber's about there. At the start of the session, I often like to feed just a little bit of bait. That just means any fish that are in the area will be that much easier to catch. If you feed too much, you might foul hook it and you've blown your peg. So I'm going to get on a bit of paste and we'll start fishing. It's worth mentioning that I've not actually pre-fed this. So I'm going to feed, put a piece of paste on. And I'm going to put some four mil pellets in the pot along with it. And the reason I've gone for fours rather than sixes is fours are much more attractive. They take the fish a little bit longer to eat and it'll give me a good idea what's going on in the peg. So if I get some skimmers in my peg or some smaller fish, it's not the end of the world. I want to know what's being eaten. So, I get to the end of my pole, I'm just going to push it forward to the end of my box, turn the, turn the pot over, give it a little tap just to encourage it out, and then pull the pole back to the back of my box. If I just correct the rig slightly, we're fishing effectively straight away. Now that's really weird. I think that fish has actually taken my pace more or less on the drop. It could be foul looked. I wouldn't be surprised if it is. The float sort of went, went sideways as I dropped it in. And that's one of the things that almost never happens on pace. I can't remember many times all the years I've been fishing, you catch one on the drop. But this is quite a prolific fishery. And strange things do happen like that sometimes. So I'm just going to take my time with him. First fish of the day, you never want to lose it. It does feel like it's good in the mouth now, so. It feels like a good fish. Just keep it real slow, sort of like a dog on a lead. And right at the last second, I'm gonna try and lift up and net him. So he's just coming to the surface, he's just gonna lift up. And we've got him. That's a really big fish. You don't need, if this was a match, you wouldn't, you wouldn't need many of those for a big weight. So there we go. The perfect example of why starting short is such an effective method. If I'd piled in loads of bait and dropped in, I might not have caught it. I just fed enough bait to catch one fish. And look at that. It's probably a really big carb in excess of 10 or 12 pounds. Perfect start to the session. The most important factors to think about when it comes to rigs for pace fishing are they need to be strong, durable, and tangle free. So onto the rigs, and they look quite a lot different to your average pole rig. I'm gonna start at the pole pot itself. This is a Guru Pace Pot, and the reason it's called a Pace Pot is because it's got quite high sides on it, so it just means you're a lot less likely to spill your paste out the pot, but it also gives you some room to put in like four or six mil pellets or ground bait. 
Going on to the elastic, one of my all time favorite elastics, Black Hydro. Quite a powerful elastic, but not so powerful that if we hook some skimmers and some F1s, we're not gonna have any problem losing them or them coming off. So going on to the uh, elastic connection itself, it's a Guru Pole Elastic Connector. I've actually done away with the Dacron. I just connect it directly by reversing the bead straight onto the elastic. The main line itself is 022 N gauge. No point messing about with this style of fishing. The thicker your line is, the less likely you are to tangle your rig. So nice thick line, even less likely to tangle. There's actually quite a long line between a pole tip and float. Reading bites in your pace fishing is really important. So you don't want to be striking and be really anxious on your float all the time. A nice distance between your pole tip and your float sort of will just prevent you from striking at those wrong bites, if you like. Going down to the float and the face things, it looks like quite a normal pole float. It's a uh, two mil hollow tip, but the really important thing is the fiberglass stem goes all the way through to the tip of the float. And you might wonder why that's so important. It's really important because you don't want any buoyancy in the tip of your float. The, the paste itself that we're going to be fishing is very soft and the more buoyancy that's in the float body and the bristle means the float's going to be pulling out of the paste all the time. So as little buoyancy in the tip is really important. You might have noticed I've got a little bit of silicon on the tip of the float. That's just a little bit of two mil silicon that I like to have my float when you've got ideal conditions. So when there's no wind at all, that means you can present your rig really nice. But the problem is, as soon as a bit of skim gets on the water, there's a good chance that this piece of line, the wind can catch it, and it sort of drags your float out of your pace. So if a bit of wind got up, I wouldn't hesitate to cut that piece of silicon off, and you're fishing perfectly again. Going down to the shape of the body, nice, slim, rugby ball sort of shape. Again, alleviates any like, chance of your pace getting pulled out. The stem, again, fiberglass stem, really strong, really durable. There's a good chance we'll catch lots of fish, and there's no chance that's going to break. Going down in the setup for the shotting is actually quite interesting. It's an olivette that just slides on the line. That's one of our Guru inline tungsten olivettes. Made out of tungsten, they make them really small, really neat, look really nice on the line. And I've done away with the um, insert in the silicon that's inside the olivette itself. That just ensures it runs up and down the, the line really nicely. And you might ask why that's important. When I put my paste in my pot before I ship out, that olivette will always go to the middle of the rig. So when you're shipping out, if I mimic it a little bit, the Olivet will always go to the middle of middle point wherever my finger is. So if I'm shipping out, it just means even less likely to tangle, really, really tangle for your rig. To stop that going too low down, it's got a small, super tight line stop. I position that about a third of the depth from the hook. I just feel like that looks about right. No other reason than that. Just a lot of my fishing, I have my last shot about a third of the way down from the hook. Then I've got a loop to loop set up and I've got a six inch hook length which is actually a ready rig. I couldn't time better myself even if I tried and it's a Kaizen ready rig, a size 12 hook to 017 and the Kaizen is a really good hook for pace fishing because they're quite lightweight and they've got a really nice offset on the hook and that just means the pace just clings to the hook that bit better. Like I mentioned before with the buoyancy of the float it always wants to come out of the paste itself so the hook being a slight offset just means the paste is going to sit on the hook that much better. And that is my rig for fishing both the long pole and the short pole. There's a few little bubbles coming up around the float, which is always a good sign. Little liner there, another little indication. So there's clearly a lot of fish there. Uh, and that's, I'd say that's foul looked, which isn't ideal to say the least. So you usually lose them when they're foul looked. So it's running out my peg. I'm just gonna keep my pole nice and low. When you foul look one, and I said earlier, keep your pole high, but if you foul look one, there's a good chance it's gonna come off, so keep your rig low, just prevents it from tangling. Keep your pole nice and, nice and close to the water. It's been quite well behaved, this one. So, getting quite close in now. It's often a bit of a job to land them when they're foul looked. If I had to guess, I'd say it was hooked Near the, near the mouth, maybe. Quite hard to tell, but he's quite close in now, so I'm just gonna keep my pole nice and low and exactly the same as the first fish. Ah, he's come off. Foul looking fish does come into pace fishing territory quite a bit. With a few little tricks, you can avoid it. So this time, I think I'm gonna feed a few sixes instead of fours. So I'm gonna put say 10 or 15 sixes in and maybe just a few fours. They really like the attractiveness of the fours, so I'm just gonna keep a few of them in the pot. 
So exactly the same process. Hopefully this time we'll hook one in the mouth. The reason the sixes help so much is they're a little bit heavier and when they're on the bottom of the lake they won't get sort of disturbed as much on the bottom so they just sit there a little bit better and uh, I'll probably be less likely to foul look one I'd say. Floats just sitting there a little bit low in the water now this is a classic example of when you had a couple of fish in your peg the silt just gets disturbed a little bit. Uh, little indication there could have been a liner getting indications today and fishing your peg hasn't been a problem so now the all I'm trying to think now is how can I get a fish on the hook the, the best way I'm already thinking about fishing somewhere completely different so it might be only within a meter or so of where I'm fishing but because that silt's been disturbed fish are getting quite hard to catch so I'm gonna have one more go fishing there and if I struggle to catch one this time I'm just gonna plant up a little spot just just away from where I'm fishing. Often the way with paste, as soon as that silt gets disturbed, they're really hard to catch. So, I'm just gonna try one more time. And if it's a problem, and I'm getting indications and no fish, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm sure we've, we've all had it when, when we've been fishing in matches and on sessions that you catch one first cast and all of a sudden the fish are really hard to catch. And there is a reason for that, it's because the first fish disturbs the bottom where you're fishing and then you're fishing a pole somewhere where the bottom's is disturbed and you're not fishing effectively. Replumbing up can be really effective and it's something not a lot of people do. Steve Gardner taught me this about 20 years ago and it's really effective. The reason it's so effective is you're always fishing a new part of your peg and the fish will be always that little bit easier to catch. So this time I'm just going to feed, like I said, 10 pellets brand new spot right on fresh silt that's really important there's every chance this time I'm not going to get as many indications which isn't a bad thing you might think well you're getting a bite of chuck in the other spot but here I'm more likely to feed my little ball of paste with some pellets and my rig will sit there on that fresh bottom and I'll be far more likely to get a proper bite when I catch a fish so already not as many indications I'd have had an indication by now on that other line There we go. It just proves straight away that finding a fresh bit of the bit of the lake bed to fish on has resulted in a fish straight away. Everything, I try and keep everything really deliberate with these big fish. No sudden movements. Move your pole nice and slow. I'm gonna get this around netting range. I'm just gonna try and sneak it in this one because it's not fought very hard yet and I might be able to just get it before it knows it's hooked. It's a really big fish. That, that one's an absolute monster. When you replumb and start a new spot and you catch one immediately, that's one of the most satisfying things when it comes to pace fishing. You've made a change and it's worked perfectly. So look at that. Two fish we're getting off for 25 pound. That is why I love the paste. Hooking pace can be really frustrating, but I've got a nice, quick and easy way to make it much simpler. Now, a lot of people try and fold their paste around their hook. That's not really for me. The way I like to go about it, always have a tub of water by your side. That just means your hands will never stick to your paste. So first things first, dunk your hand in the water and I'll just feel, feel out for a size of a bit of paste and I'm gonna go for a little medium sort of sized bit. I'll try and make it the, the sort of shape I'd like to put on the hook which is just sort of an oddish, sort of round, pearish sort of shape. And what I like to do is I just tighten my line slightly and I cut, make a cut in the paste with the line. So I get to about the centre of the little ball, then I'll literally just pull the hook into the paste itself, and just give it one little squeeze. One other thing I like to do is, it's quite a medium consistency, that paste at the moment. A lot of the time I'll just, with the hook in it, I'll plop my hand in the water, and I might just soften the paste up a little bit. Not too much, it still stay on the hook, and now I'm ready to fish. The size of the paste you put on the hook can make a massive difference to how successful your session is. A little bit of paste for smaller fish and a big bit of paste for bigger fish is a good rule of thumb. So hitting bites when paste fishing can be quite tricky. You usually get a lot of indications with that direct line between your float and your hook bait. So there's a couple of ways you can combat that. I like quite a long bit of line between a pole tip and float, just prevents me getting a bit giddy and striking at little indications. 
but also I like to just give it a little count when the float goes under. Maybe not a lot, one or two seconds at the absolute most, but it just makes sure that you're not striking and on edge with, with every single indication. Distinguishing between a liner and a proper bite, usually a, a proper bite is a lot faster and the float sometimes even comes back up before you get a chance to strike and I think that's where the fish sometimes picks up your hook bait, rises up in the water, your float will go under, pop back up really sharply and that's often you know a really good sign that the fish is hooked in the mouth. Liners, you're gonna foul hook some fish with pace fishing. There's a fish now. But foul hooking fish is just something you're gonna have to put up a little bit. Missing bites as well, something you're gonna have to put up with. The problem with pace, every time you miss a bite you've got to rebait your hook which some people find annoying. It's probably why it's one of the most Marmite methods around. You either love it or you hate it. But if you're willing to persist with a, a few missed bites and an odd foul looked fish, the rewards are definitely there. It's another big fish, this one. As I expect, it's gone a bit quiet on that short line. It usually happens in a lot of sessions, but I've always got the long line to turn to. So I'm gonna use what I've learned on the short line and incorporate it on the long line. The signals you're looking for when you're thinking about moving from a short pole to a long pole is you'll either be running out of bites or you'll be getting tested with silvers. You might miss a few bites from silverfish and this is a good indication to get on that long pole. Because I fouled a few fish feeding fours on the short line, now I'm only going to feed sixes on the long line. I'm not going to write off the four mils because they're still a great fish attractor, but the sixes are just a little bit denser, don't come off the bottom as much, and I'll be able to present my rig that much better over the top of them. So I'm just going to put on the same sort of size bit of paste I did last time. And the most successful amount on that short line was 10 six mils, so that's exactly what I'm starting with. Just try and get one or two fish in my peg and catch them effectively. Key things to think about when you're shipping out with paste is there's no rush. Just take your time. The worst thing you want to happen is your paste to spill out your pot and have to repeat the process. Just take your time, get to the spot, and you'll be fishing far more effectively. For the first chuck out long, all I'm looking to do is just set a little trap, 10 6 mil pellets, that bit of paste, and be patient. Getting fish in your peg hasn't been a problem today. On that short line, it wasn't a problem at the start, so I'm expecting the long line to be quite similar. So, with a bit of luck, I won't get too many indications and my first bite will be a proper one. Ah, missed the first bite. All I'm gonna do this time is just repeat that exact process. It might have just been a fish really close by, gone straight down on those pellets and that bit of paste. Proves the bait's working well. So I'm going to just repeat the process, same size bit of paste, same 10 pellets. It's just a case of resetting the trap. What I fully expect to happen in saying this is catching two or three fish like this and they'll wise up to it. So you'll catch the ones that have been in the area and then I might have to draw a few fish in by picking up a catapult and making a bit of noise. So that's the second bite I've missed now, which is pretty surprising seeing as I've not fed a lot of bait. So what I'm thinking, just like I did in the short line, I might just slip a plummet on and plumb up a little bit to the right of where I'm fishing. 
I might just have fished in a bit of the lake that's really silty. When I was plumbing up, it was quite silty, so I'm just going to put a plummet on. It's a really good idea doing this, doesn't take you too long. Sort of a minute out of your session could result in a lot more fish caught, so just taking a minute out, just plumbing up a slightly different spot. See, that's a little bit harder just there. And a little tiny bit shallower as well, so I'd be quite happy fishing there. The float actually sits there a little bit better in this spot as well. The last spot just felt like I was fishing on quite a soft bottom, so if we get a bite this time, I'd be quite confident it will be in the mouth. There's every chance because I fed that other line two or three times. Maybe there was just a little bit too much bait there and I've got two or three more fish in my swim than I wanted to have. There we go. Perfect illustration of how that can work really well. It might be a case today that you're better off not feeding a lot of bait, going to different lines a lot of the time, and setting little traps just here, there and everywhere. It feels like an F1, it is an F1. Still a nice fish. And there you go. Proof if you ever needed it, the paste isn't just a big fish bait, you can catch smaller fish on it too. The middle part of the session is often the toughest part of the day, but I feel like this is the time you need to work the hardest. There's a few little tricks you can do to keep those bites coming. Fish like those F1s, they're really welcome. So I'm actually gonna scale down my piece of paste I'm gonna put on the hook, more like, um, like a, like a pound coin sort of size. I'm still gonna feed the six mil pellets. So I'm not struggling to get fish in my peg. And all fish are welcome at this point of the session. We're sort of mid session now. A lot of the time that's the hardest part of the day. So well worth putting on a smaller bit of paste, target those other species. You might notice with my pace fishing, I like to strike really hard. I've always liked to strike hard, to be honest. It might be just because I get too excited when I get a bite, but you are pulling a hook through a, pit, through a bait when pace fishing, so you want to make sure, oh, just missed a bite then. You want to make sure you're setting that hook and, you know, I'm using a big hook. I'm using like a size 12 or even down the edge, I'm using a size 10. So that's a big bit of metal. You've got to make sure that goes into the fish's mouth. I feel like you get a few less, less uh, hook pulls when you do that as well. When I was younger, I used to strike at all kinds of bites, but over the years, I've learned a really positive bite's what you're looking for, and those are the ones to strike at. another missed bite. So thinking now of just doing something a little bit different, because I've only fed with a small pot, uh, I feel like my bait's on a really small area. A lot of the time when you're fishing for these bigger carp, you can't catch them on a sixpence. So what I'm considering doing is picking up a catapult. Just spread your bait out a little bit more, can make them much easier to catch. So I'm still gonna feed a few pellets in my pole pot. Same sort of size bit of paste that I've been using but a completely different way of feeding the swim. And the main reason I'm still feeding a few pellets in my pot, I'm gonna be loose feeding an area, probably around a meter square. I wanna focus the fish just around my hook bait. So I'll be feeding, like I say, on a larger area, but I want the bit around my pace to be the most attractive area of the swim. I'm not going to go crazy with the pellets. Seven or eight pellets at a time. I like to feed them twice though, so you get a bit of noise and some pellets on the bottom of the lake as well. So by feeding once and feeding again, 
you should ensure all those pellets go into the bottom. Sometimes if you only feed once, a carp can disturb those pellets on the surface, smear them around your peg a little bit, and they'll be hard to catch again. So try and feed twice when you're fishing on the bottom like this. Don't completely discount four mil pellets with a catapult for this style of fishing. The fish in here are quite big, sort of averaging between four and 15 pounds. So six mils is what I'm going with today. But if they were smaller in the lake you're fishing, say, between a pound and say five pound, there's a good chance four mils would be much better. There we go. Absolutely perfect example of at catapult doing the perfect trick. Maybe it was the noise. Maybe it's just that they've spread over a slightly larger area. But the first part I've had since I've started loose feeding, I've hooked in, I've hooked it fair and square in the mouth. So I've missed a few bites just feeding with a pot. It did feel like they were just over slightly too smaller an area. Spreading those pellets out, they're big, big fish, these fish. So them just being spread out of a slightly larger area a lot of the time just means there's one or two fish around your hook bait rather than say three, four, five fish. Gives you a far better chance of hooking them in the mouth, hooking more bites as well, more importantly. Yeah, he's a really nice fish, this one. There you go. Another change of tactics and another fish. Proof if you ever need it that it's not always the amount you feed, but sometimes it's the way you feed it that can make all the difference. I like to tee up my margins about 10 or 15 minutes before I plan on fishing there. The reason for this is you catch some really big fish in the edge and they've been caught lots of times over the years. So by teeing it up sort of 10 or 15 minutes before, it just gets their confidence up, they get some feeding, then when you put your rig over the top of it, a little bit later on, it'll be that much easier to catch. It's often a tough decision if you're catching a long pole whether you should give the edge a go. My advice would be give it five minutes. You might catch a really big fish and if you don't you've always got that long line to go back to. A stodgy mix when you're fishing in the edge is really important. If your ground bait's too dry it could get caught up in the middle layers of the water and you're more likely to foul up fish. Really important you have a stodgy ground bait. It sits on the lake bed much better. It makes the fish a lot easier to catch. And the two mixes I like to mix together the 50-50 for this are the mainline match method mix and the mainline match margin mix. So why are these two mixes so good? The method mix is really stinky and quite a sticky consistency, whereas the margin mix is a much coarser sort of texture, lots of big particles and they absorb the water really well. And when you're fishing in the edge and often shallow water for those big match winning fish, you want a mix that's gonna stay on the bottom of the lake and not get disturbed too much by those fish and you can present your bait perfectly right in the middle of it. So the way I like to go about mixing it is I pour the dry ingredients into a bucket, give it a quick drill just to, just to make sure those particles will mix together and then add all the water. And the right amounts of water you want to add to the mix is so it makes quite a stodgy consistency so all those particles can absorb the water and the best thing to do is leave it. Leave it for about half an hour, 45 minutes and then come back to it. And after that you'll notice the ground bit has absorbed most of the water and that's the time to add just a little bit at a time. And how do you know when the right amount of water has been added? A uh, little trick I learned to do is get a pole cup, sort of get a good, decent amount of the ground bait in the pole cup, squash it in, not too hard, place it on the, on the palm of your hand, and you'll notice you get a nice sand castle, and that should just like disperse away really easily. And that just means your ground bait's the perfect consistency for fishing in shallow water for those big hungry carp. choosing to fish down the edge, what I'm looking for is a nice flat area. Often you don't get the luxury of a big flat area to fish on, but a few inches square is often enough. 
I'm just having it just like on the long pole line, probably more importantly down the edge because there's often little, little obstructions down the edge, little shelves, little ledges, really good feel around with your plummet. I can already tell it's a lot harder down this edge. So if I raise my plummet up from a height, drop it back down, the no elastic comes out really hard there. I can feel it through the pole itself as well. It's a really nice bottom to fish on there. So it's all about, for me, just finding a nice little area to fish on. You don't want to be trying to get your pace on an area the size of a sixpence. You want to give yourself a few square inches sort of thing at least. That's quite a nice little spot just there. Now onto my margin rig. It's quite similar with a few key differences. You'll notice straight away that I'm using a much bigger pot. The reason for the bigger pot is it allows me to feed a lot more bait. So I can put my paste in there, fill up with ground bait over the top, and that'll just allow me to feed these big carp that can eat a lot of bait late on in this session. The elastic itself is one grade heavier. It's purple hydro, really powerful elastic. I might be catching some of the biggest fish in the lake on this rig, so I need something I can steer away from the bank and get them in. Down to 022 N gauge, for the exact same reason, no need to mess about. The pole float itself, these are prototype paste floats, and what I've done with the float itself is cut it down just that little bit. You'd almost notice the tip and the stem are pretty much the same length. Again, there's often a little bit of vegetation down the edge, just a bit more compact float, just makes it a little bit easier to place your rig. Just below the float itself, you notice I've got four number eight micro cubes, which means I can dangle my rig exactly where I want to place it, push the pot out a little bit further, and I'm fishing perfectly every time. Finishing off the rig, I've got a loop to loop setup again, down to a size 10 Kaizen. And that's tied to 019, a ready rig again, really strong, really durable, to catch those absolute monsters in the edge. My favorite hook bait for edge fishing, that's a really easy one for me, it's gotta be red paste. Stands out really well over the brown ground bait, and often the water's a little bit more colored down the edge, so it's that perfect target hook bait. Always put your paste in the pot first, obviously, before your ground bait. But when you put your ground bait over the top of it, it's really important to be quite gentle with it. If you like plow it on and push it down, it's a good chance you'll damage your paste and you won't be fishing properly. So I'm just gonna pat it down a little tiny bit, quite gently. And just like when we were fishing a long pole, there's no rush. Ship out nice and slow to the spot without tangling your rig. And similar again to the long pole, you're just trying to set the perfect trap. I'm going to just turn my pot over, lined up with my far bank marker, give it a little tap, move my rig into position, and there we're fishing perfectly there. Missed a bite there, could have been a silverfish, float was dancing around a little bit, but it's hard to tell at the moment, so I'm just going to repeat the process exactly the same. Sometimes, I'm not sure of the exact reason why, but carp just don't come in the edge. Today, there seems to be a lot of silverfish in the edge and the carp just won't move in. It's often a good idea when this happens to just plumb up a meter or so off the bank and often the carp will be just sitting off the silvers. exciting part of fishing down the edge for me is the bite. You get some of the best bites you can ever imagine on pace down the edge. You strike, you feel that fish's head nod, you cannot beat that.
Here we go, we've got another one in the edge. Really big fish, this one. Like they've all been today. Here he comes. Yeah, that's one of the biggest ones of the day. Well, what an absolutely incredible day we've had today at Monk Lakes. We've caught on pace in three different areas in our peg, feeding in a few different ways as well. I've absolutely loved the day. I hope you have too.